the real question is, is when it comes to Mac is what kind of free agents or trades could the Patriots make to get him a one a so in the spirit of my favorite movie coming to America hit it Matt did you happen to catch the professional football contest on television last night yeah. I am very happy to be here hey, 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 hey can you receive cause they need some help on the Patriots hey can you see a receiver coming to the Patriots? Yes, will one of these receivers be willing to come to the Patriots? I'll go through a list of them, and then you'll get my answer. The first one, Chris Godwin. Now, he's the desire of everybody in the league. Even though he went out with a knee injury at the end of the year, 98 receptions on the team that also had Mike Evans and Gronk and everything, you still get that, that Tom Brady's favorite receiver, over 1,000 yards. Five touchdowns, made 15 and a half last year in salary. He's going to want a super big payday somewhere in the Devontae Adams number. So I'm going to say no to Chris Godwin. I cannot believe it. Yeah, I can't believe that Bill Belichick will pull out the checkbook and pay a guy $20 million to be the receiver just for Mac. All right. Juju Smith-Schuster. You know what? I have a lot of respect for him because even though he went down with an injury after game uh, four, uh, game five, um, he came back to play in the playoff game with Ben Roethlisberger. Now, even though he got $8 million last year, three of it was salary, five of it was signing bonus. So Juju, Smith, uh, Juju Smith-Schuster has a very beneficiary uh, payment structure that you could probably do kind of a look-see deal Maybe like five in salary, five in signing bonus. So you save some of your cap room and get him a little more money than he got last year just to see if it works. And at $10 million, I say yes. Yes! Yes! (laughs) Emmanuel Sanders, a few years ago, absolutely. Buffalo kind of fell out of favor, but he was part of the offense for a little bit. Played 14 games, 42 receptions, but then Cole Beasley became their dependency and Emmanuel Sanders carries a $6 million price tag. And at 35 years old, I don't know how you would justify giving him maybe seven or five, five to seven million to, to come and play with Mac Jones. And he's definitely not a, 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 a one receiver. Emmanuel Sanders is a no. I cannot believe it. I um, wouldn't believe it. Mike Williams of the Chargers. Listen to this 76 receptions. 1,146 receiving yards and nine touchdowns made only $5 million last year. You know, with, with Keenan Allen on the other side of the field, he's all, Keenan Allen has always been the number one guy. So one of the concerns I would have about Mike Williams is he's always been a number two, and is he ready to step into that number one role? We've seen that happen in the bad sense with Mohamed Sanu. But with that size and that talent and that red zone Ability to catch tough passes, Mike Williams would be a yes. Yes! Yes! <laughs> Allen Robinson, this guy was like at the top of the free agency board last year. Got franchise tagged by the Bears, got himself 17, close to 18 million this past year. Only had 38 receptions because the passing game was just that bad. Only 410 yards receiving. In those 12 games. That is awful. You almost wonder. I don't know if it's so much that the guy doesn't know how to catch a pass anymore. But it's like age catches up with people. You still have to be out there for plays. You know, Allen Robinson may be that guy who, oh gosh. Like he's probably sitting somewhere having a, a beverage saying, I hate the franchise tag. But if I'm the Patriots, I don't touch him. That's a no. I cannot believe it. Devontae Adams. Now, I believe he's going to be franchise tagged. 123 receptions. Just unbelievable season. But if there's no Aaron Rodgers there, does he demand a trade? So maybe a sign-in trade happens with him. But his number is going to be much higher than the 14 and a half that he's gotten. And because he's one of the top receivers in the league, his number is going to be even higher. And I think that number is too rich. So, sounds good in fantasy, but I think Devontae Adams ends up staying in Green Bay. That's a no. I cannot believe it. J. 
Jamison Crowder. Now, here's someone that I pegged last year as an ideal slot receiver. Now, uh, still pretty young, 20. He'll be 29 when the season starts. Uh, 12 games, had 51 receptions for the Jets. And you would say, wow, did they complete 51 passes last year? A couple of touchdowns. Uh, the only concern I'd have is that his price tag is at $9.5 million last year. So if you can get him for maybe six or seven and with some incentives, I would say yes to Jamin C. Crowder as that three receiver. Yes! Yes! Now, here are a couple of players where their contracts, they're not free agents, but their contracts are up in 2023, and they have intriguing stories because of storylines happening with their teams. Number one, DeAndre Hopkins. Before you say, KJ, what are you smoking? Yeah, there might be stories that everything's good with the Cardinals now and everybody's everybody's great. DeAndre Hopkins may not like what's going on with Kyler Murray, and he may demand he wants out. Now, it would be a big risk because Arizona will be hosting the Super Bowl next year, and you'd want to have all pieces in place. But if they if DeAndre Hopkins comes and says, hey, I want to be traded. While it sounds good, if I'm the Patriots, I stay away. I say no. I cannot believe it. Now, here's the one that's the most intriguing, and it makes sense. DK Metcalf's contract is up in 2023, and I have a strong belief that Russell Wilson's not staying. So if Russell Wilson's not staying, if I'm DK Metcalf, do I want to try and sign a big deal with no quarterback on the roster? Or do I try and talk to my agent and say, hey, look, if Russell's out of here, get me out of here. Let me do the rest of my deal on a look-see with the team where I would still have leverage, but at least I could be with a team that I know has the cap space. This year, the cap space for the for the Patriots is 202. It drops down to 108 in 2023. I would try and make a move for DK Metcalf if they want to get him out of Seattle. Yes! Yes! So those are the people who potentially could be coming to the Patriots just the same way that Eddie Murphy came to America looking for a wife. We've got to find Mac Jones, a number one receiver. Mac, that seems pretty fair, right? I'm not greedy. I don't want everybody in the world. No, I, I like a couple of those names more than others, but yeah, I like that list. The The list is what they should be looking at. Those are yeah. the guys, you know, they can whittle it down from there. Yeah, so my yeses are Juju Smith-Schuster, Mike Williams in San Diego, Jamison Crowder with the Jets, and DK Metcalf, if you could pull off a trade, knowing that you'll have plenty of a cap space for him. So let's say you can pull off the DK Metcalf thing and you have the Calvin Ridley. Oh, can you imagine how dr- McDreamy that would be? Oh, my God. If for a year you had Calvin Ridley and DK Metcalf as your one-two, right? Whoever doesn't work out, you go. Like Juju Smith-Schuster would be like your, your number two receiver. Then you could think about like, okay, do you do you move on from Kendrick Bourne, you know, who's going to be a little more pricier than Jacoby Mott, right? Like, I mean, in that whole process, you have to get rid of Aguilar somehow. That's easy. In order to make it happen. You say it's easy, but it, it's kind of a large cap hit for a guy that doesn't fit very many teams. So I don't know who'd take him. Like, I, I mean, well, what so, use somebody, is he to, to Atlanta or to, you know, Green Bay if you're talking about Devontae Adams? But he may be useful to someone like Cleveland who may be thinking, okay, we're ready to potentially do a reset um, and may not stick with Baker Mayfield, right? Like, so sometimes you have to look at play. Like, Aguilar could be perfect for the Giants, you know, you have to look at places where, okay, we may be coming off of a quarterback and who the receivers are, it really won't matter. Where the inverse with the Patriots, it's like, okay, you brought in Aguilar because you thought it would be with Cam Newton. Like that really, you know what I mean? Like that really doesn't matter. But now that you know that you have an accurate quarterback and a and a, and a receiver who's, who is accurate at not catching balls, like you start thinking about where you move them to. It's it's almost like in basketball, like how you move players to the Oklahoma City Thunder. <laughs> <laughs> you hide them there. Right. Like Nelson Aguilar is like a, he's like a candidate. Like he's like the Kemba Walker kind of for the NFL right now. Like, wow, it's a big number. Where can we move you to? Somewhere where, you know, it doesn't really hurt. The Jets, 
you know, Aguilar to the Jets. Aguilar is one of those type of players at this point where if a team comes calling and says, yeah, we'll take your contract, you got to go. You can't say, no, find me a better deal. That's that's the better and best deal. You know, it's like that's that's the only deal. You Like, I work hard to get this money, said the agent. So I would also move off of John U. Smith. Those two right there combined is $27 million in cap. So because the worst thing that I think, honestly, what I think the worst thing that could happen is if Smith and Aguilar play their faces off this year and then they're gone, right? And then they're gone because now they've they've worked their resume tape magic and now and now they're on their way to somewhere else and you're getting nothing in return because they would be unrestricted. So I would say, hey, maybe we can help you help us help you. Like, go now. (laughs) Go now. We'll take you for picks at this point. Right? You you give up Aguilar to Cleveland or the Jets or or to the the Giants. Give us a compensatory third, fourth. (laughs) You know? I mean, you're still holding on to Nikhil Harry, whose contract isn't up until 2024. That's that's going to be the harder move, right? Because at least Aguilar and Jonu Smith have done something. They have something on tape in the NFL that they've done. And for that, the you know, like the Lions or the Dolphins or, you know, some of these teams where it's just kind of like, you know, run a player out there. That will be just fine. They would work. I mean, think about it. When Aguilar went to the Raiders, that was at the time when the Raiders were kind of like, huh. Now they're much better. He's not there. Patriots are, are, are better. Like, it's time. Move now. Move now. So, the yes is again. Juju Smith-Schuster, Mike Williams, Jamison Crowder, DK Metcalf in a potential trade. So, even in the free agents, I was like, be honest. Godwin's not going to come because Bill's not going to come up off for $20, 22000000 million to pay him. Right, Emmanuel Sanders, he's just up there in age right now, maybe three years ago. Uh, Allen Robinson, just, I mean, that type of drop-off. You're talking about a guy who had like 112 receptions the year before, down to 38. He and Kenny Galladay were like prized off-season targets yeah. for a lot of teams, and neither right. one of them made an impact at all. Like, like, they'll go into next year, Kenny Galladay will not be the number one, even if he's in New York, when the season starts, because Kadarius Tony had such a big breakout while he was... Off rehabbing whatever ligament it was. Right. So you're, you're talking about Allen Robinson really needs to kind of show cause for somebody. And and, and is he still a number one? You, you never know. The guy goes to another team. He may not be a number one. Aguilar would work in Jacksonville. I'm still thinking about, please, like, like if, if I'm serious, like really, you know, hey, instead of just offering up a, 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 a conflict, offer up the solution too, right? Uh, Devontae Adams, he's gonna get he's gonna get franchise tagged. You know, even if Aaron Rodgers is not there, I think things probably turn around where Aaron Rodgers ends up in Nashville. They may do a signing trade, like they may sign Aaron for two more years, make that money fit where Tannehill would fit coming to Green Bay. I don't think they believe in Jordan Love because they haven't committed any real money to him yet. So. You know, Green Bay doesn't have to have the future with Jordan Love, just the same way they didn't have that future with the guy I forgot that got traded to Seattle and was supposed to be Seattle's quarterback until Russell Wilson beat him out. I can't remember his name. But the dude never panned out to be any. Jamison Crowder, eh, my concern, even though he's a, he's a very good three and play the slot, you know, $9 million last year for the Jets. You know, he's probably going to say, well, look, I, I know I can produce better for this team. And you start getting into the ten million area for a guy, you know, who's been okay. You know, I hear people talk about like go get Barrios. Like, no, you can find that in the sixth round. Like, where do you think they found Barrios? <laughs> the sixth round, right? Like, so you know, like I, I think if you're looking at a slot receiver and you don't want to pay a lot of money, look in the draft. Just look in the draft. You know, you might even start Jacoby Myers there in the slot and uh, start to see where his where his where his value goes. Do you want a slot name that I've I've come across recently that Give actually me a could slot be a slot name? AJ Green. No, Pro- prove pretty valuable. Prove pretty valuable as a as a as a you know a fill in for Kyler Murray when he had a lot of injuries on that offense, and he actually proved to be one of the most efficient 
receivers in the slot all season long. Not at 34. Yeah, but you know, veteran presence. I don't know. You're, I'm just at looking six, at not at spending million. money, not expecting Bill to spend money that he's never really spent before. Yeah, but he was getting six million a year, and if you know that, hey, I have a value for something that you need, you know, he's going to start those talks at six million. So I, you know, just trying to get into the mind of you know non-spending Bill, you know, like would you give a 34 year old AJ Green seven eight million dollars? To come be the slot. Well, he's in that same range as Emmanuel Sanders. Like you're not necessarily spending the money because you know he's going to get 70, 80 catches, but he shores you up as as a veteran. You know you can kind of rely on. Yeah, him. you're right. They're damn veteran, all right. Thirty four years old. That's kind of <laughs> long in the tooth. It's, you know, I think that's just some of the things that you'd have to look at. You you would say, okay, if you're thinking about what would kind of be a veteran for Mac, then that's where the Jamison Crowder comes in. He's twenty six years old. You know, he, he, you know, he goes across the middle, you know, maybe, but again, if the guy got nine last year and you know, that's what the Patriots need. It, it would just be very tough to, to spend that amount of money without yeah. looking for something in the draft, but because that's what you've done. You know, I mean, look at Welker and Edelman and these, these guys are, you know, from out of nowhere, you know, and ha, you know, have been huge producers in that slot. So I can't see why Bill suddenly would say, I'm going to go now spend a lot of money on slots. Even what he spent on tight ends is is kind of a first because when he had Gronk and Hernandez, you're talking two young guys on rookie deals. So he had two great players that cost nothing. But so like even him getting Smith and Henry is really his first time paying money for tight ends. So I, I think Bill's going to be uh, pretty uh, pr- uh, uh, pretty prude when it comes to uh, spending too much on a player or a position that he doesn't see a multi-million dollar value in uh, for the return, right? Like if he's going to pay nine million for the slot, that slot receiver needs to have seventy receptions, you know, for for it to make sense. And I don't think that's what you necessarily need to pay out to get production. I mean, like I said, you even see what Jacoby Myers could do in there if you can bring in, you know, a Smith Schuster and uh, a Calvin Ridley. You know, move him to the inside. Um, see if he can do that. You know, you know. Now you've got Kendrick Bourne out there as well. So it it'll be interesting. But I think there at least there's some options out there for Mac in terms of serviceable one A receivers. I don't think Juju Smith Schuster is a one A anymore, uh, just from injury and and just, uh, just I just don't think you know he stepped up in that role when he had the chance to like he could have. All right, it's KJ Late Night here on WEEI next. Uh, something weird discussed on the Greg Hill Show that I have to address. That's next here on Late Night on WEEI.